With the historic vote in the House of Representatives that removed Kevin McCarthy from the speakership, one particular Republican rose to national attention for his role as the congressional disruptor. That man is Florida Congressman Matt Gates, and he joins us now to discuss the next step in the speaker's race. But before we do that, Matt, there was a big meeting, allegedly a big meeting happening behind closed doors today, and then the vote happens tomorrow. Did the meeting take place, and if it did, what happened? We just concluded a candidate forum with Steve Scalise and Jim Jordan, the two men vying for speaker. And I've got to tell you, Eric, I am excited about a new era of leadership here in the House of Representatives. Jim Jordan and Steve Scalise are both well known among our party's most dedicated activists. They are respected among our donors and they will be trusted among the members of the House of Representatives who now must come together to resist the excesses of the Biden administration. Uh, there was a lot of discussion about spending tonight, which I very much appreciate. We've got to have a strong strategy to put downward pressure on spending. I favor single subject spending bills to do that, not mushing everything together for one big vote. Uh, I believe that tomorrow we will likely have, uh, if not a Speaker of the House, we'll be well on our way to coalescing around either of these two men. And uh, I'm going to do a lot of praying tonight to figure out which one I'm going to vote for. You think it's going to be one of those two, uh, Congressman, because a lot of people are saying, well, if, if neither Jordan nor Scalise can get to 217s, people are oh, McCarthy again? By the way, who is no fan of yours, as you may have noticed. Yeah, I probably am off uh, former Speaker McCarthy's Christmas card list, but I wouldn't count on a political comeback. The same math problem that resulted in Kevin McCarthy losing a procedural vote, vote and then losing his speakership persist on the floor today. This is not a time to move backward. We want to move forward. And what was interesting tonight, if I can just bring the audience you know, into the room, both Scalise and Jordan offered really contrasting visions to that of Kevin McCarthy. Steve Scalise said time and again that we weren't doing enough to put the Democrats on, on uh, the spot and to play offense. And Jim Jordan talked about a more robust strategy for oversight in pursuing the Biden crime family than we've seen to date. And so it seems as though the Republican conference is about to kick into high gear. And uh, I'm really excited for that. I think we're going to do good things for the country. And we are the ones that a lot of Americans you know, place their hope in. Right now, you've got a president that can't act, a Senate that won't act. And it's the House in the House alone that has to show vision and leadership and, and really give people that sense that our best days to, can still be ahead for Americans. So, so just about a minute or so, Congressman, that we don't expect another replay of what we saw in January where there's factions of holdouts and it, it got kind of messy, especially with what's going on with 14 Americans dead in Israel right now. I mean, it, it, will this be a, a smoother process, do you predict? I do. I think that in a two-man race, there's a pretty high likelihood that one will be ahead, the other will be behind, and uh, the person ahead will have a great deal of momentum going into the coming days and really the coming weeks because government funding runs out in just tens of days, and we've got to have a, a, a way to put pressure on the Senate. We want to get our Border Patrol funded, our troops funded, but at the same time, we believe there are some agencies that deserve a real deep vertical cuts based on the harm they've done to our fellow Americans. Americans. Very quick, uh, you can't get Israel aid until you get a speaker. Is that right? Accurate? No, that, no, that's not true. So we have Israel essentially on a $3.8 billion auto pay. Marco Rubio, the former chairman of the uh, Senate Intelligence Committee, put out a statement that the Biden administration is fully authorized to grant any request uh, that we could even conceive Israel having at this stage of the game. There's a reason we've put decades into a qualitative military edge for Israel. They've got the capability to wipe out Hamas, and that appears to be precisely what they're doing. Very good. Well, it's uh, the palace intrigue will begin tomorrow night and we'll be here for all of it. Congressman Matt Gates, thank you for being here.